everyone and welcome back. As promised, I'm joining you right after our term three final exam and we have completed term three and term four starts in two days. So we're getting very excited. But if you're watching this video, you are probably an SGU student that is getting ready to end term two and you're a little bit interested about what to expect in the fastest term that SGU has in their medical program. So term three is about five weeks long and I'm here to give you some tips some things I learned along the way and my recommendations that I would have so you don't have to do it and try to make a learning curve in the what month and a half that you have of this term. So as far as textbooks go, I personally would not recommend getting textbooks. I will tell you I did not use the textbook at all. I really relied on slides and outside resources. I know this doesn't work for everyone, so if I had to recommend one, it would be the Robbins text because they're going to mandate that for term four we do a lot of practice questions out of that. They uh, recommended getting that for term four so you're already set and ready, especially with the quick turnaround time of term three. So in term three, you're going to have two exams. And then of course, you're gonna have your small groups on top of that, as well as your IMCQ still. There's not gonna be any clinical skills testing. There's not gonna be any BSCE. It's just gonna be a straightforward two exams. So make sure that you are doing very well on those so that you can get a good grade at the end of the term. Now it's gonna be split into weeks one through three and then weeks four through six. Now beginning and hitting everything off, you are gonna be hit with a ton of biostatistics. So if you are not good at math, go ahead, make sure you're reviewing. They're gonna give you a formula sheet. I'm not great at math. I was completely scared from the beginning, but it is nothing to stress over. Just do your practice questions. Make sure you're paying attention to what formula goes where and getting comfortable with those and write them out. When they recommend writing out the charts that they're going to give you, make sure you write them out. It is going to be very helpful and you're going to ensure no errors. So if you're an online student, even on campus, because they know that we are hybrid right now, they're not gonna give you anything too crazy. So all of this math and everything, you're going to be able to do in your head, or they're simply gonna give you the numbers and say, hey, tell me what this formula is, and you're gonna give them those numbers because you know that formula. The second thing that is going to be kind of tough to make sure that you get down are the types of studies. Make sure you pay attention to what is being studied. Is it retrospective? Is it prospective? The types of um, groups of people that are gonna be involved, is it experimental? So again, make sure you're re reviewing that uh, formula sheet. It's gonna have those on there as well as your biostatistics. Term three is really gonna hit you with immunology and the beginnings of that. So for your exam one, you're gonna wanna make sure that you understand what your T cells are doing, your different types of T cells, your TH1, your TH2, your Treg, your T cytotoxic making sure you have those down in the basic foundation because the second exam is really going to build on those. They're gonna provide you with a chart of cytokines, memorize those. There is no other way, go ahead, whiteboard them. I did, I wrote them out on my iPad, I used Anki. Make sure you know the cytokines like the back of your hand, what they do, and also what cells are producing those cytokines, whether it's your T helper cells, no TH1 and TH2, your macrophages, your dendrites, whoever's producing the cytokines, make sure you know them. That is my biggest advice for exam one. So we're gonna, exam two, dive really heavy into the differences between our innate cell mediated versus our humoral immunity. And you're also going to get very heavy into fungi and bacteria and worms and parasites. And this is something that you have to memorize. So as always, I can't really say too much on the exam, but just really know uh, kind of the manifestations and everything surrounding all of your fungi and your parasites and things like that. And you will also be given what is called a Baltimore classification. This is something where I linked a very good YouTube video in the, in the bio down below that one of my friends passed on to me. Review it. This is a very good video and a very good mnemonic, not only to know for SGU exams, but for step one as well. It is very simple to draw. It's very simple to remember. And he does a very great job at explaining the groups one through seven of the Baltimore classification. 
Now the second exam is also going to be very heavy on bioethics. Lots of people struggle with this. I did have a hard time with it and it's simply because ethics is so ambiguous and it seems that the way they teach it is one little word will throw you off or a situation that you should have assumed can throw you off. So just make sure you go ahead and stick to that bioethics companion. I will tell you right now, I did not read all 75 pages. And personally, I don't think I know anyone who told me that they did read all 75 pages. But there is a 19 page condensed summary document. Read that, please, please, please read that. It'll save you a lot of time and you can get straight to the practice questions. So overall this term, just making sure that you are really paying attention to wording and making sure that you're getting down the difference between the innate and the humoral immunity, and humoral immunity, sorry guys. Just making sure that you just know the basic foundation because everything is gonna build after that. The only other advice I'd have is it gets kind of crazy towards the end and I believe if everything stays the same, we should only be allowed to miss two small groups I'm not saying miss your small group, but I'm saying if you have to do it, wait until the last two weeks and miss those two. Again, I'm not saying miss your small group, attend your small groups, but if you have to, go ahead and miss those so you can have a little bit extra time studying. As we roll into term four, I will be making a video after. As always, if you have any questions for me, if you're a new incoming student, if you're looking at SGU, drop it in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer your guys' questions. As always, keep up the hard work. You're gonna be just fine, and I wish you guys the best of luck in term three.